So what we've got here is my latest eBay purchase and I purchased this for the grand total of $15. It did cost me another $32 in shipping and uh, what it is, it's a spectrum analyzer from a company called Cistron Donner. Now the seller was selling this as spares or repairs or for parts only. He did say he connected it up to the mains but there was no signs of life, no lights came on or anything like that. And uh, I did initially purchase this thinking I could harvest it for parts but now that it's arrived I want to actually have a go at fixing it. Now what is going to make this a little bit more difficult is I can't find a user manual or any kind of schematic for this device on the internet anywhere. And the company itself seems to make devices, test equipment etc exclusively for the US military. I may be wrong but they're not a big outfit like uh, HP slash Agilent where you can find lots of schematics and manuals for most of their products. So before I actually start harvesting this for parts I want to have a go and see if we can actually breathe some life back into this spectrum analyzer and see if we can get it working again. Now when you get something like this and you're not sure of its history and especially when you haven't got a schematic for it you want to spend quite some time uh, looking around the actual unit, actually lifting all the uh, PCB boards out and taking a close look for any kinds of scorching or any kinds of uh, other modification that somebody might have done to try and get this unit fixed because uh, it does use some high voltages inside here because it is a, uh, a vintage tube type display so uh, that's what you actually want to take your time doing just uh, looking around, looking for evidence of tampering now at the front here I can already see that there's been some kind of ding around here and a little bit of an indentation. I don't think that uh, was done with the shipping to me because it was packed really well. And somebody has uh, written on the corner here, they've written bad and uh, they haven't written anything on the uh, frequency uh, plug-in for this machine and that's how I'm going to actually uh, look at fixing it. I'm going to concentrate on this piece here first, which is the display unit. And this here is actually the frequency plug-in. So you could probably get different plug-ins for this, just like you can with uh, something like the HP Spectrum Analyzers. You can get different plug-ins for different frequencies. So I'm actually going to remove this and uh, just concentrate on the display to try and get that working first. But um, it came to me, it's got no covers on it, no lid, no base, no sides at all. This is exactly how it was in the box and exactly how it was described. But um, there's not a lot to this machine at all when you actually look at it closely. I mean that's all the RF equipment and uh, it connects up through the back there. So on the back here we've actually got a voltage select switch there for the uh, American voltage and here in the UK the 240 volts there's a fuse holder here and it's got no fuse in so I don't think it's going to be that simple that uh, we pop a fuse in here and it's going to work I don't think it's going to be that easy but uh, that's something we're going to have to uh, actually uh, sort out before we apply power it's got this uh, rocker switch here for selecting it says line, battery and I don't know if that stands for charge but uh, maybe this unit uh, could have been battery powered so you could actually use it out in the field as a portable uh, device but uh, without a user manual I've got no idea. You've got um, input here for power and you've got an American uh, three pin socket out. Now what I'm probably uh, thinking is going on here you've got your uh, main voltage going in here and you've got uh, a plug outlet here so you could actually daisy chain different machines so you didn't have to uh, have them all plugged into different uh, main sockets so you could actually daisy chain to feed off to uh, power another unit so that's probably what's going on there I haven't got a plug like this 3 pin plug here at the bottom so we're going to have to hack something onto there but again it doesn't look too bad it's not dinged at the back or anything like that so here is where we've got all our high voltage uh, stuff behind here and I can already tell there are screws missing from this panel and uh, it looks like it's on a hinge uh, so it could fold down like that but again there's screws missing off that hinge the uh, top part of it as well is also on a hinge to make uh, easy access for servicing 
but uh, it's definitely been tampering going off here and um, I don't think this is burning I think it's just flux residue but uh, somebody may have had a go at solder in there at some point there's definitely been some soldering going off here on these two points and uh, I think these nuts have been off as well so uh, we'll have to take a closer look inside there so I've opened up the high voltage panel first because that uh, looked like it had some evidence of tampering with screws missing and uh, straight away I found these two wires here that have been uh, snapped off away from the uh, main board down here so it could well be because this is on a heating system that uh, somebody was a bit heavy handed and they got caught up somewhere on here and they've ripped themselves away that's what it looks like it doesn't look like they've actually burnt off there or even been cut and also this um, hinge here uh, this um, high voltage cable here from the flyback transformer does get caught up on that side of the flyback so uh, it is showing some signs of stress down here so uh, that could be a problem as well but uh, other than that on this board I can't find uh, any signs of burning or any kinds of uh, tampering or any components missing or anything like that it's just those uh, two wires there that uh, are not connected up to the PCB now if you have a look at the back of the board here there's evidence of somebody uh, getting in there with a soldering iron possibly trying to uh, swap out this capacitor here uh, maybe it had gone faulty and this is a replacement but this is a uh, vintage replacement it's not one that you can buy um, so I don't know if it's the original one and somebody's tried to have a go because they haven't done a very good job because they've actually ripped off the uh, tracers here probably caused by uh, an iron not being hot enough I don't know but uh, that is a uh, vintage capacitor so uh, they haven't tried to swap it out with a uh, modern day one and apart from that uh, visually everything looks uh, you know pretty much intact I mean this uh, capacitor here could be dry inside we don't know there's no evidence of it popping or burning though or anything like that not all the resistors look fine there's no evidence of burning the uh, rest of the wires seem to all be connected to the PCB no more snapped off and uh, yeah everything else looks uh, as it should so those two wires that were hanging around I haven't uh, soldered them back to their original positions what I did I just looked on the underside of the board and this is just soldered on here and connected to a trace that just leads directly back to this resistor so I've soldered directly onto that uh, leg there of that resistor and it's same with this wire this wire was just bridged across onto the leg of this uh, diode and I've just uh, soldered directly onto that leg there and the second board again it's uh, got this hinge assembly just like the other board so really nice to work on so the second board actually looks okay there's uh, no loose wires hanging around and I can't see any burning or scoring uh, all of the components look intact there's none that look as if they're blown out so I think this board is uh, okay so I think what we can do is now move on to the uh, power supply itself so everything looks uh, fine with this I mean I'm gonna have to solder directly onto these points here for the mains because I haven't got one of those connectors I, uh, I'm not sure which kind of connector that is but uh, we can do that and uh, again if we get this unit working we can easily put uh, a different kind of jack on there to make it easier for us but uh, everything looks fine and again a quick look at uh, all the switches at the front here no burning scoring or anything like that they all seem to work well there's uh, nothing missing that I can see and uh, I think uh, what I'm going to do now is solder on those mains wires and uh, we'll give it a test so this is the jerry rigged fuse with uh, two wires just soldered on at each end of the fuse and I've wrapped it in some heat shrink tubing and I've soldered it in place on the uh, connections there for the uh, where the uh, wires go into the original fuse so we're now bypassing that and uh, here I've soldered on the uh, mains connection for the uh, mains power going into the unit and uh, I've also changed the uh, voltage regulation on the back here with the flip switch 
So I'm now going to power on the unit for the first time and uh, this kind of situation a Variac would be uh, very helpful to have but uh, unfortunately I haven't got one of those just to crank the power up gradually so we don't uh, go out with a big bang so uh, we're just going to have to keep our fingers crossed so I'm going to plug her in so she's plugged in at the moment so I'm not uh, Hearing any crackling, I'm not seeing any smoke. So I'll switch her on. Now that's interesting, we're getting a high pitched buzz. But we've got the power light on, but we've got nothing on the screen. And I've got the intensity of that tube turned up. But still not seeing any smoke. That buzzing could be um, why somebody had uh, tried to replace that capacitor on that high voltage board but we'll see oh we've got a trace it is working the tube is working so if I uh, mess around with the horizontal and vertical we'll probably get that level now I do know with um, older tube monitors and TVs the uh, flyback transformer can go slightly out of sync and start making a buzzing like that so maybe it's the uh, flyback transformer that is slightly out of sync so she's definitely not ready for the part spin yet I think uh, we can actually spend some more time investigating that wine and see if we can get uh, this back to uh, full working order but uh, no, I'm quite pleased with uh, how that's turned out and no signs of smoke which is always a good sign. So I hope you enjoyed that video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.